Well hi there, welcome to Paint and Zoo. My name's Matt and I'm joined today by Nadia who's one of our amazing keepers here at Paint and Zoo and we've come to see Bruce who's our echidna. Now the problem is that I know Bruce is trundling around his enclosure somewhere so you need to keep your eyes open during the video for Bruce. So we've got Bruce, he's an echidna, so what are people looking for? So kind of like a little porcupine, uh, very spiny, quite small. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he's about a foot long, looks a bit like a big hedgehog or a tiny porcupine, you're right. <laughs> and uh, Bruce is one of our older animals here at the zoo, right? Yes, so Bruce is estimated to be about 43 years old. He came to us um, from Bristol Zoo in 1993. Okay, so he's been yeah. around a long time. So I wouldn't have expected an echidna to live 40 years, but you were saying that in the wild they wouldn't normally live this long. So. Uh, Notes so that in the wild they can live up to around about 15 years old, whereas Bruce's probably maximum uh, lifespan is 50 years. Wow, okay, so, so 15 years in the wild and up to 50 years in yep. captivity. Uh, in the wild they're found in Australia, Papua New Guinea, places like that, right? Yes, so they what are. are they going to eat? Uh, so in the wild they'll eat ants and termites okay. um, and other small invertebrates. Right, now I know that you don't go around hunting for endless ants and termites here, right, no. do you? So what do you feed him here? Uh, so we feed him a mixture of a leaf eater pellet and dog food and egg, that's all blended up and he uses his long sticky tongue to lick that okay, Yum, yum, so, so that's a pellet, okay, uh, just like you'd feed your rabbits at home or something like that, but a pellet mixed with dog food and egg and you might be able to see it down in the feeder down here. Yep, yeah, so with this feeder here, um, he's got to manipulate his tongue around the different feeders, increases the feeding time and stimulates him quite a lot. Right, okay, so just keeping yeah. him busy. Okay, now uh, if we've got visitors coming to Paynton and they want to see mm -hmm. Bruce, then I know that he can be quite an elusive animal. He, he spends time sort of tucked away. Have you got any tips? Uh, the best time to see him is the afternoon. He's a lot okay. more active, especially in the outside enclosure. Okay, I'm the same. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> and then also when we came here, he was tucked away underneath the roots. So if he's not active, he might be hiding away in a yeah, burrow. Yeah, just or... spend a couple of minutes um, having a look around and yeah, he'll usually come on out. Right now, if visitors are watching him. If he is on the move, okay, then he, he walks in quite a distinctive way. I, I think he walks like my gran. Okay, he rolls around from side to side. Okay, and but that's something about him. He's a monotreme, right? So monotremes are they're mammals, but they're seen by scientists as being primitive. Like, what yeah. does he walk like? They have a trait similar to reptiles, so their uh, legs are on the side of their body instead of underneath. Um, so it gives that wobble gait. Okay, so it is really yeah. he's rolling from side to side because yeah. his legs are out to the side. Okay, so uh, so if you see Bruce and he's rolling around the enclosure, that's that's why. Um, okay, now uh, monotremes, as well as having this rolling gait, they, their breeding is a little bit different. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, so a monotreme is an egg-laying mammal. Um, so with the echidnas, their mating season is uh, during July and August and when it's mating season they'll form a chain so one female will be followed with up to 10 males and that one female may be followed for a few weeks by all those males, uh, the one male that... So one male, sorry, sorry one female, female at the front and a little train of males following yep. her along. Okay, and then once they're mated? Once they're mated, 22 days later, the female will lay an egg. That egg will go inside her little pseudo pouch, so it's like a skin fold rather than a pouch like a marsupial. Um, after 10 days, that egg will hatch, and then you'll have a baby echidna, which is called a puggle. Right, okay, that's quite complicated. <laughs> yeah. So, they're different. So we've got kangaroos and wallabies here mm -hmm. at the zoo. Okay, but they've got a pouch. So, so yeah. when an echidna female, not Bruce, mm -hmm. but when an echidna lays an egg, then it will go into a little skin fold. Yep. And then it hatches out into a puggle. Yep. And then it grows in its mum's fold of the yep. skin, and then it gets put into a burrow, right? Yeah. As soon as the quills start to develop, that's when mum will put the. Right. Okay, in I can burrow. understand that. Yeah. Okay, and then they'll stay in the burrow for some time until they they. Yeah, around about six to seven months until they're fully weaned. That's quite a complicated start to yeah. life, isn't it? Okay, so if we have visitors coming to Paynton Zoo and they want to see Bruce, he's a short-beaked echidna, right? So, yeah. number one, he's got a beak. Yeah. Okay, is it a beak or like it, it looks like a tube? Yeah, so it is classified as a beak. It's like a fleshy, long nose that has electroreceptors um, at the tip of it to try and find ants and termites in the wild. Okay, so you can actually detect electricity with his with his nose. Yeah. Okay, and he's got a really long, sticky tongue for picking up those ants yeah, and termites, he right? Does. Okay, so why is he called a short-beaked echidna? There are four species of echidna, um, the short-beaked echidna, which is what Bruce is, and there's three types of long-beaked echidna, and they basically have a longer beak. Right, okay, so yeah. longer nose, yeah. longer beak, right, okay. If people come to the zoo and they're lucky enough to see him, what, what does he like to do when he's 
out and about. Uh, so he spends quite a lot of time walking around, walking his uh, around his enclosure. We moved him to the nocturnal house a couple of years ago, and since last summer he has a large outside enclosure now. So I mean, you, you mentioned that in digging, he's got a, a burrow under here, and and inside he'll burrow as well. Yep. Yeah, so Bruce has made his own burrows inside um, in the nocturnal house. Um, he spends quite a lot of time basking in the sun as well. And in the inside exhibit, we give him a basking light as well for him to bask under, and he'll flatten himself completely out. So, favourite hobbies are sunbathing? Yep. Digging? Yep. Okay, and trundling round? Yep. Basically, cool. Okay, <laughs> sounds like a good life. Thank you very much, Nadia, for taking the time to talk to us today, and I hope you can come and see Bruce here at Paint and Zoo soon. Cheers.